first present he gave, ever gave me, uh, it was a book. It was a pop-up book, and it was called the Kama Sutra. <laughs> so I wrote this poem in honor of that. Would I do that? It's called Pop Up. You gave me the Kama Sutra, the pop up edition, with full chance for reader participation and plenty of tabs to pull. There are pictures of bendy brown beauties dressed in scanty but elegant clothes who show no resistance to charming insistence by amorous Indian bows. You gave me the Kama Sutra pop up version, it's so realistic. The men all have cute little lingams, and there's tabs so the reader can swing them. And the ladies are kissed, not a sw square inch is missed, from their yoni right down to their wiggly toes. You gave me the Kama Sutra and moving pictures to show what to do, and lots of advice to make love feel nice. You popped up like you always do. Sorry? You gave me the Kama Sutra, and I know that we have a fine future. The practice of loving depends on the moving of all body parts, above all the heart, and that's how I know that I suit you. Oh. The way she tells them. Um, this is a slightly more serious poem. Uh, it's not really about me either. It's called Tattoos. In the 60s, it was CND, badge of belonging, them and us. She saw the solemn pie chart as an anxious face, eye eyebrows drawn down in stern warning. She etched it on her shoulder and marched at Greenham. In the 70s, she fell in love, and love stretched across her chest. No name for that would change from year to year, but the symbol remained clear. I am one who loves passionately its counterpart with jagged tear, and tears of blood came later. When she got religion, the crucifix was hammered on the surface of her body's temple. The arms invaded her arm's skin, her spine stiffened with stylized wood grain, and blood ran from the nails on her feet. Her sh hair shaven, she accommodated the Godhead's suffering the crown of thorns encircling both their brows. There was no room for more. This is called How to Make a Dress Out of Silence. Take a yard of the, of the quiet of a dawn before the birds wake. Use the sudden hush that heralds the fifth, fifth symphony and the breathless pause in the soliloquy by Hamlet to create a template for your bodice. Be sure to calculate the volume of the air held in place by the lungs alveoli, so that it stretches easily across the depth and breadth of your chest. Cut out the skirt from a length of the boundless, soundless bag vacuum of space. Now thread a hiatus with a sense of absence, and so into one piece. The capacity to fly a kite is inversely proportional to a man's gravity. His faith in the absurd is all that lets him hear the words of the birds cruising in the stratosphere. His kite tugs the rational tether that holds him to the earth's skin, until the string cuts wild arabesques in clouds, brands his hands with stripes of its will to freedom. Hovering on roaring winds, the kite's frivolity is the antidote, antidote to gravity. And finally, starry-eyed. She was Scorpio, he was Cancer. He was eccentric, she was dramatic. She was an actress, he was a dancer. She was Scorpio, he was Cancer. She loved the way he would romance her. Why did he love her? He was emphatic. She was Scorpio, he was cancer, he was eccentric, she was dramatic.